What's going on, Badger Nation? My name is Michael Erickson Fasheen. I'm the founder of AdBadger, and I'm really excited to talk about our early September 2022 app update. And I am very pleased to announce uh, that we are now rolling out the total ACOS value inside AdBadger. And we've done it in a really, really smart way that's really going to allow you to take your analysis and your optimization game up a lot. Uh, in case you're unfamiliar with what total ACOS is, let's first quickly address what ACOS is, ACOS, that stands for ad cost of sales. So how much your ads cost over how many, how many sales your ads are brought in, ad cost over sales. Now, total ACOS modifies the sales. So what that means is it's your ad cost over your total sales. Um, so that includes non-advertising sales revenue in there as well, uh, which has always led me to say that this should be A-C-O-T-S for total sales, ad costs over total sales, uh, ACOTS. However, that does not roll off the tongue. Uh, so people generally refer to the ratio of your ad cost to your total sales as total ACOS. So here we are. And incredibly, incredibly important to track your total ACoS, especially as 2021, 2022 saw huge jumps in CPC cost and probably will see it in 2023 as well. Now, there's two really good ways to fix rising CPCs, which is to track total ACoS and ACoS. Now, if you are only tracking total ACoS and ACoS, on an account level, meaning you know your total ACoS, you know that you spend $10,000 on ads and you generate $100,000 uh, of total sales, giving you a 10% total ACoS. And if that is your account level, and then you know that on an advertising account, you have a 30% ACoS, and you're only tracking it on those levels, as a business owner, as a marketer, you are missing out massively. Because even if you have a 10% total ACoS on the account level, that means that Individually, on a per product level, you might have products that are 25, 30% total ACoS, and you might have products that are 5% total ACoS or 2% total ACoS. And you are leaving uh, a lot of missed opportunity by not optimizing the things that are doing really well, and you are wasting a lot of money by letting these things with an above average total ACoS run rampant. So don't be fooled by the averages. You need to track this stuff on a per product basis. Uh, in fact, if you're only tracking it on an account level, you are missing out more than half of the information that you need. Now, even further, when you track it on a per product level, so you have a list of your products, you have it sorted by ad spend, you can see exactly how much each one cost you uh, and what the total ACoS is per product. What you then wanna do is not be distracted by averages yet again, because you probably have that one product in five, six, seven, eight ad groups across 10 different campaigns, whatever it might be. You need to be able to know where that product, maybe that product has a 15% ACoS, and you might say, this is above my 10% target. Let me go and stop advertising this product or do something drastic. You don't wanna do that. Don't be distracted by the averages. You then wanna go in and see where that product is doing well. Because that 15% total ACoS product, there's probably some ad groups where it's doing 20% total ACoS and some ad groups where it's doing, you know, maybe 5 or 6% total ACoS. And you amplify the winners and optimize the lagging areas by lowering the costs strategically and amplifying the costs strategically. So again, tr being able to track your total ACoS and ACoS per product, as well as then being able to go and see where that product is performing well or 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 performing poorly is massive. So we've given you both, not just total ACoS per product, but also where it's performing. So let's jump in here. This is now in our dashboard and product performance area. Um, so all you do is go there, you'll connect your set selling partner API, and then you will begin to see columns and images that you hadn't seen previously inside AdBadger. You're gonna get pictures of the product, you're gonna get the title, the ASIN, the SKUs that you're advertising, the total sales of the product. In fact, here's a rundown of all the columns that you have available to you. The image, product, ASIN, SKUs, total sales, units sold, total ACoS, organic sales, and then all of the ad metrics, ad impressions, ad clicks, ad sales, ad orders. We look forward to adding a whole bunch more columns here, uh, like your stock levels and all of those good things. Um, but for now, we wanted to keep this total ACoS focused and have this evolve over time. So again, you'll see all of your ad metrics, so like what the ACoS is on a per product level, and then you will see your organic metrics and your total ACoS 
metrics right next to it in line on a per ASIN value. Um, we actually haven't imported this data into our demo account. So the only way I can show you is with a real account, which is why there's a lot of blurring here. Now then, once you identify that product and you say, hmm, this product is above my total ACOS threshold or this product is doing especially well, where is it doing well? Where is it above my total ACOS limit? You can then go into our ad manager, view all product ads and do exactly that. You can type in any ASIN that you want and then see exactly where that ASIN is being advertised. You can then see in an example like this, well, in my uh, automatic sponsored product campaign, I've got 15 orders at a 30% ACoS. And then over here, I've got uh, a manual campaign where I guess I've done search term graduation. And I've got a whopping 660 revenue per click, 27% ACoS, 18% conversion rate. So this is actually a very well optimized campaign. He's got some stuff going on in the auto, but most of it is going in the uh, high volume uh, manual sponsored product campaign. So this is perfect. But if I were to come in here and see a manual keyword targeting or maybe the ACoS of the product uh, or the ACoS of the ad group is way above my limit, then I can go in and strategically trim the fat. So again, it gives you a way to see your account and your product performance in a way that you haven't ever before. And it's extra awesome because I'm noticing that this person put the ACoS target in their titles and the ACoS is actually perfect 30% and 27% uh, for this product regardless of where it is. Oh yeah. Let's move on to a positive keyword tool update. The rest of these are relatively short, uh, which is basically the search term graduation tool that we have, which is our positive keyword nightly hunt because the badger hunts for you. Uh, and we've added a really simple box which helps speed up this process. Um, so if you're moving from auto to an exact and you've done it once and you've created a rule for the auto and exact and you want to not see that ad group again in your selector so that it just speeds up the process, you now have a button to do that. So you know if you've created a positive keyword nightly hunt rule for one auto campaign and you're done with it, you just click that, you won't see it again. So your list is gonna get smaller and smaller so that you're only seeing ad groups that have not had a rule acted on it previously. Awesome. And we've got a really cool placement bid update with some more coming. Uh, you are now able to track changes in impact of your top of search or your product page bid modifiers. So this is also now found in sponsored brands and sponsored products. So we added this chart for sponsored brands too. So when you're an ad manager and you're scrolling through your list of campaigns, uh, what you will see is a column for bidding adjustment. You will be able to see your bidding adjustment summarize, whether you have a top of search product page, really nice and neat for you. Then see like, hmm, do I have two campaigns over here that don't even have a top of search placement bid? You can then see that immediately, make an adjustment. Uh, if you're unsure about what to put, you can always ask us. But when you click into a single campaign and you go to placement bids, you see something very cool now. Uh, you can actually see your placement performance over time. So I can see, oh, if I made a change in this case, maybe I made a change on September 2nd, uh, September 3rd, and then boom, September 3rd, my top of search sales totally jumped up. It allows you to see not just your sales per placement over time, but any ad metric that we have, you can now track on a per placement level, which is awesome. So if you're going in there and you're optimizing and you're playing with these placement bids, you can now edit it, watch the history, because we also log the history for you. And you can actually go back and see like, hmm, on August 1st, I went ahead and I gave it 100% top of search. What did that do over time to my spend for top of search, for my orders on top of search? Absolutely amazing data because typically you can only get it in the sort of like one time frame from Amazon. Uh, and we have now laid that out on a per day basis for you. And then you, of course, can change your placement bids right from AdBadger as you always have been. Just click that button and change the placement modifiers. That is again in the placement bids section. Uh, if you're curious to learn more about our roadmap, head over to adbadger.com slash roadmap is where we post our updates as well as what's coming in progress soon and deep into the future. Uh, and of course, if you're an AdBadger customer, we would love to go over any of these new updates or any of our features at all. Click on the resources section, book a call, and I will see you inside the Badger Den.